Welcome to the Mystic Media Channel. I'm your host, Rubina Rathabon, a.k.a. The Real Astrologer. And here is a video reading on Omari Hardwick. Now, I've been wanting to do a video reading on him for quite a while now. So, the new season of Power is out. And we're on episode 6, I believe. But it didn't come out this past week. So, I'm looking forward to seeing it this Sunday because I have the stars app on my phone so that's how I watch it but I do like the show power and I feel like he does a really good job playing the role of ghost but the interesting thing is his character as ghost in my opinion reflects his actual life not in terms of him being this drug kingpin and murderer but in terms of him basically living a double life so I'm going to get into his numerology and his nail chart, and I'm going to explain what I mean when I say that I see him living a double life, just like his character Ghost on the show Power. Now, Omari Hardwick, Hardwick was born January 9th, 1974. That makes him a Capricorn. And with his birth number being a nine, that deals with him being very self-determined, very individualistic, and also that points to him being very athletic. So when he was young, like in his uh, junior high, high school days, he was a big-time athlete. I believe he played football and basketball and maybe a couple of other sports. But, yeah, he was one of those all-star athletes, and that points to his nine birth number. Now, his life path number is a 31 that breaks down a four. And that's the same life path number as Stevie J. And we know how Stevie J gets down. So with that 31 for life path number, he's supposed to live a life basically of kind of like a hermit in some respects. Now he is a Capricorn and Capricorns do have loner tendencies. So that fits his uh, 31 life path number. But also that 31 and 4 can deal with a life that is unique. It can also deal with him being um, just into like alternative uh, modes of living or just an alternative lifestyle. Basically, that means that he's very tolerant and that he is uh, very unconventional in some type of way or that his life can be very unconventional. Now, his son and Mercury are both at the 19th degree of Capricorn. That 19 basically deals with being a star, also a star athlete because that 19 is very athletic, it points to him being an actor. Also, it means that he's very much in touch with his masculinity. He's very male-oriented. He's very ambitious. Capricorn is just naturally ambitious, and at the 19th degree, that's going to be somebody who really wants to make it to the top and quickly, and that's going to work very hard to ensure that they stay at the top. Also, his son being conjoined to Mercury makes him very versatile, so that makes him, um, you know, that deals with him being an athlete, but also an actor. He's also a poet. And I'm going to get to that in a minute as to why he's a poet. Uh, but this sun conjoined to Mercury can also point to some other issues that I'm going to get into as well. Now, he's very much concerned about maintaining uh, some type of reputation. So in more, you know, more likely a positive reputation, an upstanding reputation. Now, what's interesting is that his son and Mercury are conjoined to the asteroid Juno. And Juno deals with the main challenges in your relationships. So with his son and Mercury conjoined to Juno, that can deal with an issue involving his uh, children. And also where basically, because we're talking about that Capricorn energy, where he's very much self-contained while he's in a relationship. So he's very much about... Um, number one, he's very much about maintaining a certain type of reputation and he might get into a relationship just to preserve that reputation or to maintain a certain type of reputation. But it can also mean that he's very much um, self-contained or insular with respect to his approach to relationships. Like basically it's like, OK, it's my plan. These are my ambitions, and if you're not going to go along with what I want, then things aren't going to work out. He could be very much authoritarian, and this can also deal with him 
basically playing a father figure role in his relationships and that getting in the way of him experiencing true love or that true connection, that peer to peer type of connection in a relationship, that balance. Now his son and Mercury are also running parallel to the fixed star fasces and that fixed star fasces can produce, um, violence, accidents, it can also result in situations where you are blind to the true intentions of others or where you try to put up some type of facade. People are blind to what you're really about. Now his son is in square, Sun and Mercury are in square to the asteroid Chiron. His Chiron is in Aries. And when you see that, that can produce someone who is inauthentic or artificial in some way. It can also point to exceptional circumstances in a person's life that requires them to um, have to make certain types of compromises. It can also deal with being hypersexual because Chiron is in Aries and also where he might have issues with his sexuality. And also, this is the interesting part. Um, that is a deviant aspect. So this can point to a person that is basically a deviant individual or they are deviant in some way. They don't operate according to the norm or the dictates of society. They get around things, and they want to be the exception to the rule. You can look at it as, uh, that way as um, well. Now, that brings me to this article that I'm about to read, and this is all the way back in 2002 because it's related to this movie that he was in, which points to what I'm saying about him living a double life because he played this type of character in this film. And a lot of my uh, subscribers and uh, viewers, I'm sure you've seen this film. It's called For Colored Girls. And basically in the film, he played Janet Jackson's character's husband. And he was on the down low in that movie. So let me just read this article. It's on this uh, website, Rod Online, and basically, uh, I think it's a gay website, but anyway, here it goes. In today's must-read, Omari Hardwick sits down for an extended interview at IndieWire's Shadow and Act. Hardwick played the closeted gay husband of Janet Jackson's character in Tyler Perry's For Colored Girls. Hardwick was asked to share his character motivation, and it sounds like he is saying, pause. He says, I can't relate to being gay. It was a challenging role. It's challenging because I'm black, said Hardwick, who was quoted as repeatedly saying that he focused on being a deviant person. Now that goes back to that aspect that I'm talking about in his chart. His son and Mercury are in square to Chiron and Aries. So that can produce someone who is deviant in some ways. So. Reading along, shadow and act, how was it a challenge? Oh, 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 I'm sorry, Omari says, it was a challenging role for me because I am black, I am a black guy, and white guys like Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal can play those types of roles and their audiences will say that the roles are artistic. So you feel that the role was challenging because the black community does not support roles like Carl? Omari says, the black culture perceives roles like that one in a negative light. How did you prepare for that role? Omari responds, I focus on being a deviant person. I focus on doing something wrong. I was lying to my wife. I was lying to these men. I prepared for the role by closing my eyes and thinking of times when I had lied. Shadow and Act asks, you did not focus on the sexual orientation of Carl to get into character? Omari responds, no, because it's like, how could I do that really well? I focused on being deviant. Did you tap into your own sexuality to build that role? Omari responds, you want me to explain how I use my heterosexuality to build this role? Shadow and Axe says, yes, I do. Omari responds, okay, let me know if this is what you mean. There was this one time while we were filming in New York where I was testing myself. I challenged myself to run through Central Park and behave like Carl. I wanted to see how I would run and live differently as my character. And what did you find out about your character during this run? 
I did not get through the run without checking out women. It's a natural instinct. So that's why I solely focus on being deviant. But you know what? Some of the greatest actors have played gay men. Anthony has played a gay man. Jeffrey has played gay. When it's all said and done, I am secure enough with my manhood to say to the world, I am a male actor and it's okay for me to play a gay man. Does it sound like Hardwick is very secure in his manhood? Sounds like he repeatedly is stressing that he is straight. Not sure why. Well, okay. Did he mean that white actors can take on gay roles without negative repercussions? And not black actors, not so much. And why keep using the word deviant? Gay men, closeted or otherwise, are not deviant. Perhaps he meant or said devious, and this was just a poorly transcribed and poorly written article. Curious to hear your thoughts. So that was the end of the article. So, back to his natal chart. So, I see indicators of Omari being a gay man who is living a double life, who is trying to uh, portray that he is a straight man. So that's the connection I'm making to his character as Goats. He's also James St. Patrick. Um, that's his uh, real name on, um, that's his actual name as the character, but he's also Ghost, which is his uh, alter or his, uh, what do you call that? his alter ego or his split personality. So in the show, if you haven't seen it, he's basically this big time drug kingpin who's always getting caught up and he's living a double life because when the show first started, his kids didn't know that he was a drug dealer. Like he was perpetrating like he was this upstanding individual and he opened up a nightclub to basically uh, launder the money and to make it seem like he was legit. So then things started unraveling and all that stuff. So now back to his chart. Omari has his south node at the 27th degree of Gemini. And that Gemini south node, like I was explaining to my student yesterday uh, when I was teaching her in uh, one of her classes, uh, I was explaining to her that that Gemini south node can produce a person that is prone to duplicity. Gemini is the sign of duplicity. It's basically like where the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing or where a person is talking out of both sides of their mouth. That's where you get the whole term two-faced it from. That is about duplicity. So coming out the gate, we already know with his Gemini South know that he is prone to duplicity. He's pl prone to speaking out of both sides of his mouth and being two-faced it. Now, with that 27 degree, that deals with him being very athletic, but it also deals with him being very male-oriented. He's very much oriented towards male. But the thing with that 27 is, a lot of times with the 27th degree, there's something that the person is hiding. They're not being upfront. They're not being straight up about who they really are. Now, to make matters worse, his Saturn is conjoined to his south node. So his Saturn and Gemini is at the 29th degree. And I always talk about that 29th degree dealing with conflict, both internal and external. And it can often produce conflict with women, beginning with the mother. But it can also result in interference from a third party. And this interference often threatens your sense of security or also threatens who you basically claim you are or whatever like that. There's also issues uh, basically just dealing with relationships. There's often love triangle situations that go on with that 29th degree. So with his Saturn being conjoined to his south node, basically this deals with his reputation being at stake. And also, I'm seeing that as basically he's very much about fraternity. And he was uh, in a fraternity when he was in college. He was in uh, Alpha Phi Alpha. No, I'm sorry, Alpha Kappa Alpha. No, am I, I'm sorry. I'm getting this confused. He was in, because I'm not too much. Of, yeah, Alpha Phi Alpha, which I heard. I heard from two people in the past month that the Alphas are known to be gay, a lot of them. And I never heard this. Like I said, I, I never pledged. I went to college, but I didn't pledge. So I wasn't into that fraternity sorority life or that Greek life or whatever. But that's what I heard, that they are basically uh, 
the gay Greeks, the gay black Greeks, or that's what they're known for. So I was just like, wow. So uh back to what I was saying, that deals with his North Node in Sagittarius. So it's like a dual agenda he has going on. So the North Node in Sagittarius, it deals with him being in college and joining that uh fraternity, among other things. But the fraternity is a throwback to that Gemini South Node because that Gemini South Node could be very much that he's about brotherhood, especially because it's conjoined to Saturn. So he's very, that, that deals with like a fraternal framework. And again, he's very male oriented. So this can also deal with him being punished by his brothers. Sorry, my alarm is on. This can deal with him being punished by his, uh, brothers when he's in the fraternity or whatever. But even facing punishment for being who he really is or fearing that he's going to be punished or that he's going to be denigrated or that his reputation is going to be tarnished. So this Saturn being conjoined to his self no points to him working hard to maintain a certain type of reputation, but him being like two people in one. Now, his north node is at the 27th degree of Sagittarius. That points to him being very athletic in this lifetime. Because that 27 breaks down to 9, so that reinforces his 9 birth number. And also this deals with, in this lifetime, he needs to live a life that is basically about him being as free as possible, him being truthful, and also where he is about morals and ethics. And that, again, goes back to that Gemini South Node. And with Saturn being on that Gemini South Node, that means he's very crystallized in terms of his past life tendencies. Crystallized meaning he's very much stuck in that framework. So even though he was this great athlete, which is very much that North Node in Sagittarius, even though he went to college, which is very much that North Node in Sagittarius, he's still very much about that Gemini framework, which is to be that dual person, to have that dual persona, to have that hidden agenda, to basically engage in duplicity. In order to get by in life and also to maintain a certain reputation. And also, it's again, it's about that brotherhood. So that North Node in Sagittarius also uh, points to um, him basically being kind of like a, a sex symbol in this lifetime as well, especially since it's at the 27th degree. Also with his son and Mercury at the 19th degree, that points to him being a sex symbol as well. Also, him being a nine birth number points to him being a sex symbol. And I have to admit, he is very attractive, very good looking man, handsome, um, very distinguished looking, all that stuff. So that points to that 19th degree. Um, now his moon is in Leo. So again, that points to him, you know, having that very manly, masculine appearance. Also him being an actor, being athletic. Also brings the, uh, theme of children into the mix. And he does have two children, I believe. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. And also that deals with, you know, him having a manly physique. He does have a very nice manly body. And that deals with him having the power show, the power fame. So Leo is a sign of power. Now, I don't know what time he was born, so I'm not sure what degree his moon is at in Leo. But his moon uh, could be a sexto to Pluto, and that can deal with that power show. And also him being in, um, being empowered through his dealings with others and certain partnerships that he forms. And also his, his moon could be in square to Mars. So that can deal with his, him having issues with women. His moon could be opposed to Venus and Jupiter. And his Venus and Jupiter are in Aquarius. So that right there, um, reinforces what I was saying about his gay tendencies because Aquarius is the chief sign of homosexuality. So his Venus conjoined to Jupiter can point to him basically being in a relationship, an open relationship, mind you, where he's able to still be gay, but where, you know, he's masquerading as straight. And if these, uh, if Venus and Jupiter are opposing the moon, that would make a lot of sense because that can deal with, he has a wife that is basically not all that she's seen. 
And the interesting thing was, um, when he first got married and presented his wife to the public, he received a lot of ridicule and a lot of uh, nasty comments and remarks about the way his wife looked. A lot of people were saying that his wife looked like a man. A lot of people were saying that his wife looks transgender, which I agree with. So I'm not saying that she is, but I'm saying his chart does uh reflect the possibility of him basically masquerading as straight. And being in a marriage that is artificial because of that Aquarius influence, he also has Sun Square Chiron, which I said can make him deviant in some way, or where he basically wants to be the exception to the rule. And his Venus conjoined to Jupiter can deal with him being with a woman that looks very androgynous, and she does. It can also deal with him being with a woman that's very tall. And she is basically his height, and he's 5'10". Now, his moon is in trying, well, it could be in trying to Neptune. I believe it is, because that deals with the uh, his um, fame in Hollywood, his success in Hollywood, and also that show uh, Power. And also his moon could be in trying to Chiron as well. But these aspects also have, Another facet to them because they can point to the type of wife he has. So with Moon trying Neptune and Moon trying Chiron, Moon trying Neptune could deal with a wife where, you know, she is able to maintain his secrets or she helps him to maintain his secrets or she helps him to maintain an illusion. Also, Moon trying Chiron can deal with a wife where, you know, she allows him to be the exception to the rule. Are also a wife that is extraordinary or exceptional in some way. And again, like I said, his Venus is in Aquarius conjoined to Jupiter. And that can deal with a partner that is very exceptional. A partnership that is unique in some way. Unconventional. Even an open relationship. I'm almost certain that the marriage he, he's in is an open marriage. Because he wouldn't have it any other way. And remember I said his son and Mercury are conjoined to Juno. Which means that he basically has to call the shots in his relationship. And basically he's in a relationship of his own making that is very much managed. It's not, you can say that it's basically to preserve his reputation. And it's basically a business arrangement. Also... His Venus is in square to Mars. His Mars is in Taurus. Now, Mars and Taurus will produce someone that has a drive to appear that they are above board, a drive to keep up appearances. It does make him be very much about getting that money. So that is perfect for his role as ghost or power. But it was also perfect for his uh, athletic career because um, that's somebody like when they... Uh, when they try to shoot, like if basketball, they're going to meet their target because this is somebody that is going to practice over and over and over again until they get it right. And also, if it, we're talking about football, this is somebody, you know, if they hit you, they're going to hit you hard and you're, you're going to fall down because it's like they're a bull. So he definitely has that Taurus look in addition to a Capricorn look. So I'm definitely seeing a combination of his Leo moon. And I peg him as a Leo rising because that would uh, support his very masculine persona. So he has Mars and Taurus, so I could definitely see that in his appearance. But he also has his moon and Leo. I could definitely see that, but I could definitely see that Capricorn influence as well. And that combination can produce a very good looking uh, man that's like very distinguished looking. You know, uh, what do they call that? Uh, the, the distinguished gentleman type of look. So, yeah, he definitely has that. And he definitely has that look like, you know, you could trust him. Like, he has that upstanding look. But his Venus is in square to Mars. And that is a common aspect for gay men. Because that means that they can't really relate to women or they're not attracted to women. It also makes him conflict-oriented. And this is a perfect aspect for him playing ghosts. Because as you see, if you saw the show, if you watched the show, you see that he and his wife, they're always going through problems. He was cheating on his wife with Angela. I can't stand, I can't stand Angela. But, um, 
yeah, he has a problem with infidelity, being faithful, all that stuff. So that ties into Mars square Venus. So that basically reflects his real life. Also, because Venus is an Aquarius, this could deal with him basically uh, making an artificial marriage or even an artificial woman seem legit or seem real. Or trying to make things seem normal, but he constantly has to um, make these adjustments and compromise it. Also, the square between his Mars and Venus can deal with him having to compromise his sexual needs and attraction to keep up appearances. Meaning he can't be fully out like he wants to be. So again, going back to that South Node in Gemini, he's prone to duplicity. He's prone to be two-faced and he's basically two people in one. Now his Venus is in trying to Pluto and that's a millionaire aspect, but it can also deal with him being with a woman that is transgender. So again, going back to um, his life path number 31 and 4, which he shares with Stevie J and like I'm speculating about Stevie J being with Jocelyn, who I believe is transgender, and tra Jocelyn came out and said that Stevie J is attracted to transgender women. And that coincides with Stevie J's life path number 31 and 4. Omari has the same life path number 31 and 4. And when you see his wife, her name is Jennifer Thatch or something, um, she definitely has that androgynous look, and she's definitely, in my opinion, is suspect of being a transgender woman. He also has Venus and sexual to Chiron, so that could deal with him being a record breaker in terms of sports because his Chiron is an Aries. He might have pl plenty of trophies from his athlete uh, days. He tried to uh, make it in the NFL, but he wasn't. He didn't make it. But um. That Venus sexual Chiron can also deal with him being in a relationship that is exceptional in some type of way. Or him being with a woman that is exceptional in some type of way. Also, his Venus is in sexual to Neptune. That's another millionaire aspect. But this also can deal with him being with in a relationship that enables him to maintain an illusion or to maintain his secret. His Mars is in when comes to Pluto which is an aspect that can point to um, danger of being outed. Also where he has to operate under the cover because of his sexual proclivities. Because again, his Mars is in Taurus, so he has a need to seem like he's normal or above board or that he is basically um, someone who is, who he says he is, I'll say that, on the surface. But with that Quinn comes with Pluto, this can actually deal with him being blackmailed. So because Pluto is in Libra, he could be blackmailed by his own wife, where she's threatening to out him. Also, um, this could deal with him basically um, having to make adjustments for the sake of his relationship, basically always having to appear above board, even though he is into that life. You know, and he seems like he's very much into masculine men, which explains why he got with the wife that he has. So let's say that she's not transgender. Let's say that she's a biological woman. She still looks very masculine and she has that androgynous look. So again, like I say, he's very much male oriented. He's very much about maintaining this brotherhood. So that can explain why he chose a wife that looks like that. So again, even if she's not transgender, she has that androgynous, very manly look. Now his Mars is uh, running parallel to Denebola, which can deal with going against society. So that reinforces that Sun Square Chiron aspect. And also uh, his Mars is conjoined to Tisiphone, and this can deal with where he is being punished harshly. So that can point to him basically getting hit with that paddle in, when he was in the fraternity. But it can also deal with him being punished harshly by a male or where a male is threatening to uh, reveal some information. Because remember, his Mars is also in Quinn Kung's to Pluto. Now his, uh, let me see. But yeah, that's basically it, I think. Let me see. But yeah, I feel like I said enough. But um, yeah, that's my take on Omari Hardwick. 
Let me know what you think. But again, go back to his role in For Colored Girls, where he was playing a down low husband, living a double life. Go back to his role on Power as Ghost, where he's living a double life. And this reflects his natal chart, which shows that it's an indicator of him living a double life. And like I said, I believe the double life consists of him being a gay male, masquerading as straight. So that's my reading about Omari Hardwick. Again, let me know what you think in the comments section. And uh, if you would like a reading, you could go to my website at Rabina.com. Peace and many blessings.